Hi, I'm Cindy, and today I am doing a review of a writing how-to workbook that I found very uh, interesting, and I'm excited about it. It is called The Twelve Pillars of Novel Construction, Your Blueprint for Building a Store... Um, a solid story. It is written by C.S. Lakin and it is part of the Writing Toolbox series. This was published in 2015 by Ubiquitous Press in Morgan Hill, California. Uh, this is a workbook that comes with a companion book by the same name. Uh, here today, I am reviewing only the workbook, although the author refers to the book itself often, and the recommend recommendation, of course, is that they be used together. Right away, I like this idea of novel writing being broken down into 12 sections, or as the author suggests, 12 pillars. The author believes in structure, as I do, when approaching story writing and often likens this to the plan that must be developed before beginning construction on a home or any other building. Um, as someone who prefers a structured approach to outlining and story creation, I myself am drawn to the idea of 12 tasks or pillars. Now, also, I envision future possible videos. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, but let's get into the workbook. Uh, maybe the illustration isn't so much a house, but maybe a theater or a Parthenon, something with pillars. Uh, there are four corner pillars and eight secondary support pillars. Uh, first, we prepare the corner pillars, and these are the concept with a kicker, uh, the conflict with high stakes, the protagonist with a goal, and the theme with a heart. Now, we've talked about conflict in previous videos, and also we've talked about character development, and so we've talked about having the protagonist have a goal, one that is essential to the story and central to the inner struggles of the protagonist. Um, the concept with a kicker, and not only does it have to be a uh, an idea, but then it has to be expanded into more than that. A concept isn't just an idea, because ideas are a dime a dozen. A concept has to, has to be fleshed out. Um, uh, it's a story about someone who has this in their mind that they want to do or that they're afraid of and, and then this is going to happen and they overcome this to achieve that. That's your concept. And it's got to be ratcheted up. It's got to really have a good kick to it. There's a lot of competition and as they say, there's nothing new under the sun. So... To make it original, you really have to find a way to work it out. Your conflict has to have stakes that are high. It's not enough to have a, a boy that discovers that he's a, a wizard and goes off to school. No, he's got to have a confrontation with his mortal enemy uh, who not only wants to destroy his life, but also take over the wizarding world and, if possible, uh, even the mortal world. Now, that, of course, is Harry Potter. How high are those stakes? Um, so you need those four pillars. And once those are done, then the additional eight pillars are uh, added in for increased support. And these are your plot and your subplots with their related scenes. Uh, and then your secondary character or your secondary characters have to have needs and desires 
that they might have goals and the plot points of the plots and subplots might have something related to the uh, secondary characters and uh, and their development uh, your setting isn't just some random place it's got to have a purpose there's a meaning to it um, whether it's um, Oh, terror from Gone with the Wind, or as I, as I brought up before, Hogwarts. It's got to have a purpose. Um, another pillar is tension, ramped up to the max, the author says. It's not enough to have a little tension, it's got to be the ultimate tension and the maximum dialogue is important important too that's another pillar you want it to be essential dialogue compress it um you don't want it to be just random conversation about the weather because that's really boring it's got to be something that moves the story along in some way a voice very important that's another pillar it's got to be unique for each of your characters. Not the ones that are necessarily in the background only, but your main characters and your secondary characters, the ones that are um, the support characters. And then there is your writing style, which has to be concise and it has to be specific. You can't ramble. The writing motifs, and they have to be there because it adds cohesion, it adds depth. The workbook is equipped with lots of blank sections for note taking throughout and has the author's notes on how she applied each of these pillars to her own novel development along with specific questions to help a novelist construct a new story, including checklists, map minding, and an outlining template. The potential is endless, and I give it five stars. Until next time.